How's it going, you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Solar, and I want to go through some of the basic components on a grid-tied solar system. Now, for many homeowners, it's kind of like drinking from a fire hose. There's a lot of different components, a lot of different terminology, a lot of different calculations. So I want to break it down into digestible chunks, specifically only focusing on one component at a time. And today we're talking about a combiner box. Now, when it comes to a grid tying system, if you have a combiner box, that means that you're using microinverters at each one of your PV solar panels. Microinverters will be located on the rails right underneath your PV solar panels, and they're actually converting the DC power from the panel over to AC right at the microinverter, and then the AC power is being combined together and then lands within a combiner box. Now there's many different brands and different types of combiner boxes, but this is gonna be one of the most common you'll see out there, and it's made by Enphase. This is their IQ Combiner 4, and it has capability of bringing in four different strings, each string going into a 240 volt, 20 amp Eaton circuit breaker with an additional 15 amp circuit breaker here, also 240 volts, but this is not bringing in any of the power from the PV panels. This is just powering the overall smarts of the Envoy system here. Now this combiner box is part of an 11.3 kilowatt grid tied system that I just had installed in house. It cost me $37,000, which is a large chunk of change. And if you guys are just considering solar, check down a link in the description below this video, and that will jump you over to where I started. I started sizing out my system and getting an estimate on the cost. That cost estimate was pretty accurate on the high side. I was all the way up on the high side. And remember that cost estimate you're getting is after a 30% federal tax credit. But this combiner box has a big old plastic cover on it. I do not recommend you taking the cover off, especially when it's on, but I'm gonna open this up to give you a little bit more of the guts of a combiner box, which will help things make a lot more sense. So now with that cover removed, you can really see what's going on. We have in and out when it comes to our wires. In brings together all the different 10 gauge stranded runs coming from your panels on your roof or your ground mount. For me, I have three different strings. One is nine panels. The other is nine panels and my last is 10 panels. Now this is 10 gauge, usually for a 20 amp breaker, say home or residential, you could use 12 gauge, but because this is such a long run, they use a thicker gauge wire to reduce what's called line losses. So that's why they're using 10 gauge here. Each of these 20 amp, 240 volt breakers are mounted to a common bus bar, very similar to your main panel or sub panel in your home. And then you have two different phases going down to these main lugs and then this black conductor and this red conductor, which are stranded THHN six gauge. Now those are gonna tie into your panel. This is what's grid tying us, tying us to the utility. We have that 15 amp that is going over and powering your circuit board. And that is that Envoy system. That is the smarts of the operation. And then you will have a current clamp over here that is monitoring the black side of your three different strings. So that's measuring the current coming through all three of those strings together. And then you will have two different bus bars on the bottom. One is gonna be your ground bus bar and the other is gonna be your neutral bus bar. And that's pretty much it. That is the guts of the combiner box. The whole purpose is to bring together all the different AC power from the different strings coming together, bring those into one combiner box, and then bring those over to your home, to your main panel, whether you're going into a breaker on your main panel or you're doing what's called a line side tap. So hopefully that gave you a little better understanding of a combiner box. And again, I do not recommend you take the cover off and poke around, especially when everything is up and running. Let me know if you guys have any specific questions down in the comments. And I love DIY setups, smaller setups just to get started in solar. It really starts to help you understand those different components and not 
everything translates over to a grid tied system, but it really does start to help you understand what's possible from solar. And honestly, it's just fun. So if you want to test out a very simple DIY setup, check out this video right here. I'll walk you through all the different components and how to get up and running in the same day. So thanks for joining me on this video and we'll catch you on that next one. Take care.